Well, there, there is some, uh, you have a picture on my webpage where it's about habits. And uh, you can do that if you like, test that. Uh, it's not something I don't, I don't teach it, but it's uh, one way of finding out how things work without getting too complicated. You have a cue, the cue and an urge when you do a habit. And uh, you have uh, uh, on the picture, you have uh, uh, some checkpoints. You can ask yourself, what time is it? What time? depending on if it's maybe it's uh, two o'clock in the afternoon and every time you go to get a coffee you feel the urge to get a cookie and since you get uh, the cookie and then you get uh, well <clears throat> maybe I take that sandwich also and then you take that uh, chips and suddenly you have been eating 3000 calories and you're getting oh man my diet doesn't work all right and, and you can also ask where you are so if the you know the surrounding or the environment or the context uh, triggers a habit that's what the cue means it triggers the habit and um, I will keep it simple without technology here and you can also ask if there's someone else around you maybe uh, uh, a girl or a boy, you know, you see them and suddenly you feel the urge to, you know, do things or uh, smoke or whatever it is. Or if you did something, you just did something and that triggers it off and loses the emotion. Uh, for example, I, uh, if I want to do things, I find myself, I'm getting hungry for chocolate sometimes I'm getting hungry for chocolate and that happens when I watch TV watch TV so for me that I know that uh, I'm fine everywhere else but sometimes when I'm sitting down watching TV I'm getting a really good craving for chocolate and I don't understand why that because that's how habits operate they just triggered by the context now I can either you know stop doing the TV watching and I won't get hungry and this is all uh, one of those will be consistent with the cure the urge or the craving you have with a habit one of them when you find out what time it is or where you are or someone else is around or you did something or and this is uh, you know a one way to check for you know simple things in your environment that oh okay that's what's going on then you can ask the, what people would call a second their game but it's actually what is the reward for this craving or urge or habit or whatever you call it so you can then substitute it you can replace it with another uh, reward. Instead of a cookie, for example, you can try coffee. Or in my case, since I'm uh, craving chocolate when I'm watching TV, I can either uh, test that with watching a video, or I can uh, find out if I'm sitting on a different spot in the sofa, if that helps also. Uh, or I can try to replace that with when I'm watching TV to, to drink uh, coffee or water or something else so I can do that, I can test that if I want to and I can then, then experiment testing different alternatives until I find one that oh this is replacing my chocolate craving when I'm watching TV and then I can replace that with something new I can establish a new habit instead of the old one new habit and I can do so so it triggers the new habit triggers by the old you know 
So if I'm watching TV and I'm craving chocolate and I don't want to have that craving, I can find out what the craving is and find a way to replace that. If that works, fine. If that doesn't work, and then I have to do, refine the search and all that and create a new habit. So there is a text on the end of this, and I'm going to it. When? That's the time. That's time. When the time is for the cue, that means the habit to kick in. To when the time is for my cue to kick in, I will do. I will do the new habit I want to do instead. Because. because it provides me with this reward I found over the years that if you're uh, getting conscious I'm right that I'm conscious here about the cue here if you're aware of this cue that kicks in your habit and you become aware of uh, if you can replace it that's more than often enough to to not be able to to not do the habit there is also a re research that shows that if you're uh, emotionally uh, sad or feeling alone or stuff like that you know and you start doing other things like you know go out meet other people you're, uh, you smoke less, uh, you don't eat as many cookies and chips and stuff like that and all that. So the activity itself, if you're, you know, the activity itself is to do something new, will also help with your habit. So uh, and smoking for most people is a social activity with someone else. So, uh, so it's not something about the time, it can be for some and where it is or if you did something or something like that to reward yourself or whatever it might be and habits can be tough to break sometimes and sometimes it's a little bit easier so the, the, the diagram is self-explanatory and there is a book you can buy if you like I don't sell it or something like that but there's a book about habits and let you know what another perspective if you like on habits and how you fix it but you have the picture on the web page and the link to the website so you can check that out for yourself and what I do when people ask me okay so in this case this it's when I watch TV I got craving for chocolate That's what happens to me. So I know that it's happening to me. I'm finding myself watching TV and suddenly I feel the enormous craving of chocolate. So I know that when I'm thinking about this, that what's going on? I'm not hungry now. I'm not hungry when I'm in front of the computer. So it's not the screen that triggers it or something like that. It's when I'm watching TV. It could be that I'm sitting down in the sofa or whatever it is. So what I do when I'm using the technology that I'm developed when I become aware of this that I'm when I'm watching TV that I have a chocolate craving normally for me it's enough that I'm you know oh I'm becoming aware that watching TV triggers my craving chocolate and then I can you know uh, either modify it in some way obviously I can either modify my habit I can modify it as suggested previously I can try to modify it by replacing it or uh, finding a way of uh, if I can either replace it to, with uh, drinking coffee or water or if I need to uh, create a new habit and the thing here is once you become aware of um, the memory here in this case I'm watching TV now I know I now know what 
sets the habit off. When I'm sitting down watching TV, I get a craving. Cool. So now for me, I'm becoming aware. Then it means I can also uh, use the RBM system and create it, or I could even do that without knowing that. Because all I need to do, do now, in many cases, is to create a new memory. When I'm watching TV, I'm fine and don't have any craving, and I can continue to enjoy my uh, day or TV experience. So I can create a memory like that when I'm watching TV. And I'm enjoying that without, you know, I'm enjoying I'm going on with my day. So I can modify that so I make that kind of memory. And then when I do that, obviously I have to have some kind of representation in the future. So I have some kind of representation of this future memory. And so I'm watching TV and I'm fine, I don't have any cravings because I'm feeling fine I'm watching TV and just enjoying whatever is on the TV or uh, since why else would I watch the TV? And if I find that, you know, that kind of works for me, okay. Um, create that kind of representation that, you know, watching TV and doing that. Um, and I don't need anything else because most likely when I'm craving chocolate, because I'm likely it's expecting to have something to the TV watching. That's a logical assumption I'm making here, right? I don't need to know why, what that comes from, or something like that. I'm just making a new representation in future memory. So I'm watching TV, finding uh, myself enjoying whatever is shown, because I like to watch that, and I'm just fine. And I make that kind of future representation, future memory. And I'm focusing on that, and I'm waiting to, as you know, we talked about previous videos to the space to relationship with this memory when I know the space between the video and with watching TV and all that when I have the space with that because if I focus on the future memory right now and noticing the space for me It creates a, what you would call a um, call a vestibular response. It also creates a muscle response, which is uh, normally I don't talk about this because um, this is really hard to understand because muscle response. It's a, it's a big word, preoreceptive. Um, in every muscle you have uh, sensory organs that react to how you're thinking. This is why you see it sometimes in hypnosis experiment when you're holding a, a, a weight in your hand with, a, with a, you know, something and you're thinking about uh, moving this object, so you're holding it like this and then you're thinking about it and then the object starts to move without you moving your hand idiosyncrasy or something like that. That's a popular thing they do in hypnosis. Ooh, my pen is moving without me. I'm just focusing on moving it and my hand starts to move it. And uh, that's the one way of explaining the pre -receptor. So when you have a, uh, creating the space to the memory, because that's how the body responds to it. It's a vestibular action, it's a muscle response in it, and it's a pre -receptor. And I can, as I'm sensitive and I've been training this for a long time, I'm aware of that kind of response to the memory. So I'm tracking that and holding that to my reference into the, the future memory. And for me it becomes watching TV then becomes a more what you would call associated experience. Which, which means that the other things that present in your um, field of vision, we can call it field of vision, but just to keep it simple, field of vision, you're excluding everything else. So what happens is that when you're focusing on 
uh, the memory and all that and the experience it produces. What happens is everything else around this starts to, uh, to move away because the space that opens up also excludes other things around you because you get more focused or concentrated on the task or experience, whatever you call it. Because whenever people don't have the experience, they are always in some way not fully what people would call associated them. And they have uh, some kind of other limitation or something that disturbs this all the time. Uh, for a family, for example, if you're a kid and um, you have a sister or brother, they can uh, annoy you if, uh, because they just need to be in the room or something like that. And then the kids have to learn to separate themselves from their brother or sister so they can have this kind of peace of mind or whatever you call it. You can call it the peace of mind. You're not distracted from anything. You're just having a peace of mind. Now, I can use the peace of mind as my TV experience also. So when I'm watching TV, I have a peace of mind. I could can use that as a future memory also. So when I, or I can also say that when I'm watching TV, I'm fully associated or inside uh, my TV experience with nothing else to disturb it. That will also most likely make sure this doesn't happen, creating chocolate. The thing here is to understand is that uh, when you focus on the space, on, on focus on the future memory, space happens as a reservoir or muscle response or a pre-receptor response and you can feel that after a while. It's not an emotion, it's a feel. And depending on what it is, it's a, it's a bigger or smaller reaction or response. And for those who are not that good, we I told before, I recommend people to do interflow. Moving the body to create mobility and get you feeling younger healthier <clears throat> and other benefits from doing the interflow and you don't need to do stretching stretching is then after a while uh, included in this mobility because you're increasing your range of movement and since you increase your, your movement you also prevent injury and you recover faster in, in working shop and all that but I also recommend people to do the RBIM drill. The RBIM drill is to move your arm to create a sensation of space and focus of attention. Much similar to the keeping on idiosyncrasy that the, uh, <clears throat> but in hypnosis they do that as a cool test to find out, oh this my brain can do this, <laughs> right? And we can use that to become more aware of the awareness of the vestibular or the space that you create in relationship to memories in this case. And since it's a future memory, since it's a future memory, we don't bring the past with us. We just create a new sense of well-being. And Interflow will help with that, it's just with the drill alone. But it can be used and become more aware of your body and how it moves. And the vestibular muscle responses or preservative field, or as we say, space. That's habits.